Hey kids, guess what time it is? That's right, it's time for another 100 Days of Narration Challenge, day 74! 74! 74, this day is 74. And this is Autobiography or Biography Week, and today's book is an actual autobiography. It is I Am Jackie Chan! N not me, I'm, I'm not actually Jackie Chan. Or am I? You don't know. I could be. Because I'm an Asian, and um, I'm an Asian, and as you and as we know, all Asian people do martial arts, and I could be Jackie Chan and um, kicking ass and taking names and doing your laundry and math and you know what we Asian people do. Anyway, the book is I am I am I am Jackie Chan. My life in action by Jackie Chan with uh, Jeff Yang, who I'm assuming uh, uh, was the one who helped them write this book. Otherwise, why would why, why would it say with Jeff Yang? Anyway, so I mean, do I need to explain who Jackie Chan is? I mean, well, maybe maybe he's not that into maybe he's not that much in popular culture these days. I mean. Most of his modern movies are kind of a joke. Kind of a joke. I haven't seen this latest one, the, the one about the Zodiac, you know, the Zodiac Killer, starring Jackie Chan. No, it's not a Zodiac Killer. Um, <clears throat> oh, that, that would be an interesting movie, the Zodiac Killer starring Jackie Chan. That would be an intriguing, very disturbing movie. Um, but yeah, Jackie Chan. Let's just read the blurb on the back here. Uh, oh, it starts off with a... Um, with a quote, I'm standing in the sky on the roof of a glass and steel office tower in Rotterdam, Holland. There are 21 floors of air between me and the concrete pavement below. I'm about to do what I do best. I'm about to jump. And then we go into the actual blurb. As one of the biggest stars to burst into U.S. theaters. Really? Just his U.S. career? I mean, his best work was done in Hong Kong. I mean, he still did good work while in the U.S., but nothing compared to the stuff he did in Hong Kong, that he went back to Hong Kong to do because the U.S. wouldn't do it because, oh my god, insurance premiums, la la la. No, fuck you, fuck you. Go. Going back to Hong Kong to do um this stuff. Anyway, as one of the biggest stars to burst into U.S. theaters, Jackie Chan has put America's hottest heroes to shame, wowing audiences with breathless, death-defying stunts that are the trademark of his movies. Movies from Rumble in the Bronx to his newest blockbuster Rush Hour, so you can tell how long ago this book was written. In I Am Jackie Chan, Jan Chan tells the fascinating, the fascinating, harrowing, ultimately triumphant story of his life: how the rebellious son of a refugee, sorry, of refugees in tumultuous 1950s Hong Kong, became the disciplined student, disciplined disciple. Disciplined to disciple. Um, he could have used anything after, after you know, discipline. Oh, maybe studious disciple, but disciplined disciple. It's um, like I mean, like shaped like itself. The round circle. I mean, it's like the circled circle, or the round rounded, or the or the or the T T, or the or the giant giant, giant giant. That was also. Whatever, it's, it's... That's just bad. Okay. How the rebellious son of refugees in tumultuous 1950s Hong Kong became the disciplined disciple of a Chinese opera master. How he became... How he made the leap from stuntman to superstar. And how he broke into the Hollywood big time by breaking almost every bone in his body. And still, Hollywood did not appreciate him, so he had to go back to Hong Kong. Because Hollywood has a has a deep has a deep seated uh, problem with Asian people or any person of color in general. I mean, they say they're colorblind, but it's not. So that's uh that's the that's the industry I have to look forward to breaking into. And hopefully, I will have better luck luck than Jackie. But um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the fact that I sound like a, sound like a white guy would help a little bit. But then again, that hasn't helped certain people who, oh, certain Chinese people who also sound like white people. 
Anyway, let's not discuss politics and racism here. Let's not take, talk about right, racial politics in, in the entertainment industry. That's just uh, That just leads us down into places where we do not want to go in this reading. So let's stop at, ooh, somewhere in the middle, hopefully without pictures, because if I do pictures, that means it's going to reduce the amount I read. <clears throat> okay. Let's do this one, page 230 of I Am Jackie Chan. Meanwhile, Loeb immediately put me to work on a new project, Magnificent Bodyguards, whose only original aspect was that it was shot in 3D, not that the technology added anything to the movie. In order to show off the effects, we were instructed to kick and punch towards the camera. As you might guess, this made my role as stunt coordinator very difficult. Usually in the fight, the two combatants are concentrating on trying to hit each other other. Lo refused to talk to me throughout the shoot, directing me by proxy through the DP. I'm not exactly sure why he was so angry. Looking back, I think now that maybe he was offended that Shen Shihua and that Shen Shihua, Shihua, oh god, um, I just realized I don't know how to say, I don't, I don't do talk to talk to Chinese. Uh, you're gonna have to get like a real, uh, Asian person for this. Cause, uh, you know, I just do the accent sometimes. So sorry, but, uh, me so sorry, me, me no love you long time, as they say in the great Chinese tradition. I think I've offended at least two people with that. <clears throat> Anyway, I think now that maybe he was offended that Shen Shihua and I hadn't followed in his footsteps, learning from the master. He was a proud man, and despite, of, and despite all of his bluster, he saw himself as a kind of father figure to me, Shen, and the other young, underpaid people who toiled for his company. And, to tell you the truth, I did learn a lot from him. A little about what to do, and a lot about what to avoid. It was only when Bodyguard rapped, that Lo finally approached me, a triumphant expression on his face. He announced that he'd commissioned a script for a comedy of vehicle of his own, which would show me, and audiences everywhere, what martial arts humor was really about. It's called Spiritual Kung Fu, said Lo. I got some great ideas for it already. Just walking up the stairs to get here, I was laughing. I'd unconsciously edged over to where Willie was sitting, looking in vain for some moral support. Willie had his head buried in some papers and was trying to get and was trying to appear as busy as possible. It was clear he didn't want to get involved. Lo rolled over to where I was standing and put his arm around my shoulders. Now, Jackie, I'm not necessarily saying you aren't funny, he said in a fatherly tone. See, when you get a little more experience, you'll get an idea what the audience is looking for. This film is going to have them rolling in the aisles. This is a film that's going to break you into the big time. I flinched. I had a hint of the kind of stuff Lo thought was funny and... Frankly, the whole project sounded to me like a disaster waiting to happen. Sometimes I'm smarter than I look. Spiritual Kung Fu was a disjointed mess of bathroom humor and clumsy slapstick, with me stuck right in the middle. Lowe's idea of thigh-slapping comic sequences included one scene in which I stuffed a number of small animals into my pants and another in which I urinated, urinated on a midget ghost. The film was a stinker. Everyone knew it, even though, though he would never admit it. Unable to, convince, unable to convince distributors to cough up the funds to get the film released, Lowe shelved it and quietly put me into a new film called Dragon Fist, which actually had the potential to be a good movie. It had a solid script, with well-written scenes, a rare for a Hong Kong film. It had nice action. It even had decent characters. As usual, however, none of the characters were suited to me. If Bruce Lee had still been alive, he would have turned the movie... If Bruce Lee had still been alive, he would have turned the movie into a huge success, burning up the screen with his portrayal of the lead character, a student avenging the death of his master. I did my best, but my best was 
unconvincing. Distributors weren't any more interested in Dragon Fist than they were in spiritual kung fu. Willie's warning that distributors would begin shuff- shutting the door in on a- oh sorry. Willie's warning that distributors would begin shutting doors on my own movies, just no, just on my movies, was coming true. And without the ability to put films into distribution, Low Way Productions was rapidly running out of money. Somehow, Low found a way to blame Willie and me. After a meeting with his backers, Lowe stormed into our, off- into our office and kicked everyone out, telling us that he wanted a private discussion with Willie. We were hardly out the door when we heard the muffled shouting that was, that was Lowe's idea of conversation. Suspecting that a conversation would have a great deal to do with me, I loitered around the front entrance of the building, waiting for Willie to come out. The private discussion took several hours. Lowe left the building first, chomping on one of his signature guitar. Signature guitars, signature cigars, rather. His hat jammed tight. His hat jammed down tight over his head. I ducked around the corner, but Low would have hardly noticed the Queen of England in the state he was in. Sorry, but Low could have, but Low would have hardly noticed the Queen of England in the state he was in. Then Willie came down, a scarf casually thrown around his neck and a tired expression on his face. I know you're waiting for me, Jackie. He called out. I guiltily came around the corner. Let's go get a drink. So what did he say? I blurted, as Willie downed his vodka tonic in the gull. As as Willie dra- uh, blah, 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 as Willie downed his vodka tonic in a gulp. Well, of course he reminded me that I told him that you would be a star. He said. I believe he called me a moron and several unkind words, and several other unkind words. I slumped in my seat. I told him that you needed more time. He said, tinkling the ice in his glass. What I didn't tell Lo was that what you really need. Is a different director. Now that's news," I said, rolling my eyes. "Don't you play Mister Sarcastic with me, boy," sniped Willie. "I wouldn't be saying this to you if I don't have a solution, would I?" That caught my attention. "What do you mean?" Uncle Willie is always looking out for you, don't you know? He smiled, flicking an imaginary piece of lint from his jacket label, jacket lapel. He smiled, flicking an imaginary piece of lint from his jacket lapel. I got a call earlier this week from Mr. Ning Si Yun. Oh boy, from Mr. Ning Si Yun. Yun, S W E dash Y E Y U E N. Si Yun, Si Yun, Mr. Ng Ng Si Yun of Seasonal Films. They are a competitor of ours, small time, but Mr. Ng is a f- is a smart cookie. He asked us to loan you to them for a few films. They'll pay us sixty thousand Hong Kong dollars for three months, and of course, they'll pay you as well. What did Low say? I asked. Willie patted himself down, found his cigarettes, and lit up a smoke before answering. He said he'd be willing to pay Ung money to get you out of his hair for a few months. You're off the hook, my dear boy. Now you just go and make Uncle Willie proud. My heart skipped. My heart skipped a beat. Full of second chances, I was getting yet another, and something told me. This might finally be the one I was looking for, and we get to a new chapter. Seasons turn, new chapter. Seasons turn. According to Willie Ng Si Yun, the mastermind of the independent studio Season of Film, uh, let's try that again. Let's try that one again. According to Willie Ng Si Yun, the mastermind of the independent studio Season of Films, was known for having a good eye for young talent. Before leaving to start, before leaving to start Seasonal, he'd worked as an executive for Shaw Brothers. For Shaw Brothers, his coup, his coup, and his downfall was that he tried to convince Run Run Shaw to sign Bruce Lee to the monster contract he wanted and deserved. Shaw, who couldn't imagine that a mere actor was worth that kind of money, suggest- suggested that Ung was crazy. Ung was crazy. Okay. I think the phrase that Americans use is "crazy like a fox." Everyone knows what a mistake Shaw made in missing out on Bruce. Even Sir Run Run himself, who told his friends afterwards that turning Bruce away was the single biggest error he'd ever made. After the Bruce fiasco, Ung decided he needed to go off on his own. Seasonal, a w- sorry. Uh, I think that word is meant to be seasoned rather than seasonal. Uh, maybe seasonal. 
Seasonal, a well-regarded but small outfit whose films... Oh, right. Uh, seasonal is the name of the studio. Whoops. Uh, I forgot in the middle of reading. It's like, oh, wait, no. Seasonal is... Oh, oh, seasonal is the name of the studio. Ah, idiot. Seasonal, a well-regarded but small outfit whose films were, were usually quality projects starring no-name actors was the result. The idea was to borrow. To, the idea to borrow me had originated with a, one of Seasonal's top scunt. Uh, the idea to borrow me had originated with one of Seasonal's top stunt coordinators, a man named Yun Yun Wu Ping. I think we all recognize that name as well. Yun Yun. Oh God, I don't know how to pronounce that name properly. Yun was actually a big brother of mine, though he was old enough that he'd left the school by the time I got there. I'd met him before through one of the. I'd met him before through one of his brothers, who'd stunt coordinated a film I'd worked on some years before, and we'd come and we'd become friends. When Ung told me that it was Yun who'd caught, when Ung told me it was Yun who brought up my, when Ung told me that it was Yun who brought up my name, I immediately knew that I could trust him. Any producer who listened to his stunt coordinators, any producer who listened to his stunt coordinators was a man worth working for. Jackie, let me tell you what I think, said Ng. I think you have a lot of potential. I gave him a half smile. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I've heard that, I said. I tell you what we're going to do, he said. I don't know you. I don't know much about you. I've seen some of your stuff, and I'm impressed. And you believes in you so much that he actually wants to direct you. That was flattering. Even to this day, I feel good when one of my opera brothers says when one of my opera brothers says something nice about my abilities. But the truth is, he continued, no one knows what you can do better than you. So I won't tell you what we have planned for you, because we don't have anything planned for you. I want you to tell me, if I put Jackie Chan in a movie, what can Jackie Chan do? I was stunned. Lo had gone to great lengths to drum into to drum into my head my insignificance. To him, I was just a cog in the movie machine, a part of his grand vision. I was pretty much disposable, cheaper and easier to to replace than a camera, or even a spotlight. And here, Ung was asking me for my opinion, not on stunt work, not on martial arts, on filmmaking. Turn the page. Like an avalanche, it all came out. Like an avalanche, it all came out. All of the conversations I'd had with Shin, with Shen Shihua, with Willie, and even the Samo and Yun, Yun Bao, boy, Bao, boy, 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 Biao. I think these days is actually uh, B I A O rather than B A I O. Uh, at least that's the uh, Eng what the uh, English has done with that particular name. Yun Biao, back in my stunt boy days. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Maybe that's somebody else. I get confused with names. Um, I know it's Sammo Hung. Uh, Yunba, it's 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 that his his other martial arts brother. Um, or is it? Maybe it's somebody else entirely. Oh crap! I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay, whatever. Let's just keep reading. I tell Ung my likes and dislikes, my dreams, my philosophy about what makes a good action sequence. I said things to him I thought that I never. I said things to him that I never knew I'd thought about before, but all of the, but all of a sudden made sense. Mr. Ng, NG, please. For some reason, that was a nickname he preferred. NG. Bruce was the best at what he did, I said. No one can ever do it better. So why should we try? People want to see, people want to see living ideas, not dead bones. Bruce was a success because he did things that no one else was doing. Now everyone is doing Bruce. If we want to be successful too, we need to be Bruce's opposite. I leaped off my chair into a fighting stance, remembering the show I had to put on for Willie. Bruce kicked very high in the air, I said, demonstrating an above-the-kick head. I say we should kick as low as possible to the ground. Sorry. I say we should kick as low to the ground as possible. Bruce screamed when he hit someone to show his strength and anger. I say we should scream to show how much hitting someone hurts your hand. I winced and shook out... I winced and shook out my fists, a comical expression of agony passing over my face. Let's try that sentence, set that sentence again. Let's try that sentence again. I winced and shook out my fist, a comical, 
a comical expression of agony passing over my face. Bruce was Superman, but I think that audiences want to see someone who's just a man. Like them, someone who wins only after making a lot of mistakes, who has a sense of humor, I said. Someone who's not afraid to be a coward. Uh, I guess that doesn't make too much sense, does it? NG was stroking his chin, watching and listening to my animated to my animated demonstrate to my an NG was stroking his chin, watching and listening to my animated demonstration. I think it all makes sense in the world, Jackie. All right. I think it makes all the sense in the world, Jackie. You said slowly. All the sense in the world. Let's do it. Let's make your movie. My jaw dropped. I wasn't sure how he'd respond to my suggestions. I guess I was hoping. I guess I was just hoping he wouldn't shout at me. I never thought he'd take me. I never thought he'd take what I'd said seriously. Uh, I never thought he'd take what I said seriously, but he had. And it made me excited and nervous at the same time, because all this time I'd been telling myself, if only I could make my kind of movies, I'd be a big success. Now let's see if I was telling myself the truth. And, you know what, that seems like a good place to stop. The start of Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan and this legendary sequence of quite awesome movies. Um, yeah. I don't know how easy it is to get his movies in uh, Western distribution because most of the time, uh, I'm guessing that all be like the dubbed stuff, which I'm not too keen on. Uh, I like to hear the original Cantonese or sometimes Mandarin, but but hopefully it's Cantonese language um, because it's uh, it, it's it's just more fun to listen to. I mean, I do listen to dubs uh, of stuff in general, um, but. Uh, Sometimes I just like to listen to the original language and just, you know, let that sound wash over me because that's the original sound that's coming out. And it's, you know, it's it's fun. It's fun that way. Anyway, uh, that was day 70. Wait, 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 wait. Not 73. Did I say 74 at the beginning? I sure hope I did because it's day 74, not 73. Yesterday was 73. Yesterday was 73. It was I am Spock. This time it's I am Jackie Chan. I'm two different people at the same time. I am Spock and Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan as Spock. Wow, that would be a really cool movie. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, day 74, I'm Jackie Chan, My Life in Action by Jackie Chan with Jeff Yang. Uh, I hope you enjoy that particular reading. Uh, join me tomorrow as we get to 75. There are a lot of um, big numbers coming up. Uh coming around now i mean uh we had 66 then 70 now 75 lots of them in short order like lots of them in short order so 75 three quarters of the way through less than a month left until i reach my final book of the 100 days of narration challenge isn't that amazing isn't that amazing i think it's amazing i think it's crazy wow went on too long anyway hope you enjoyed today i uh, see you all tomorrow for day 74 Hey, you seem like a cool, wonderful, and or awesome individual with impeccable taste in voice actors. So why not follow me on Facebook or Twitter? You can keep up with the latest projects I'm in, or that my friends are in, or that you could be in because I occasionally post links to open editions to various projects that require voice acting out there, or that nobody's in, but they're interesting projects nonetheless that you may also find interesting. Also, lots of random thoughts about whatever's on my mind at that particular moment. Usually it's about food, or video games, or foodie video games. Mm. Anyway, you can follow me on Facebook at OmadonVA, or Twitter at Omadon. Hope to see you there!